So good afternoon and thank you everyone for joining us. Once again, happy Teacher's Day. We know that this is normally a holiday, so it means a lot that you're sharing this very special day with us. And uh, um, once again, before I introduce our next speaker, I would like to say thank you for the support to the CCPA, Centro Cultural Paraguayo Americano, Instituto de Formación Docente Paraguayo Americano, IFD. And, and now we are ready to talk to our guest, our super special guest. Um, her name is, as you can see, Danielle Sclafani with an Italian accent. <laughs> and she's gonna be uh, talking about teaching across age levels, interactive activities for all ages. So you already know the system. Uh, if you participated uh, last time, Danielle is gonna be telling you when it's a good time to be uh, talking. If uh, there's nothing to share specifically, uh, if you can uh, mute your microphones and your cameras. And um, thank you very much, Danielle, for joining us. She was a former English language fellow uh, like Kim, uh, but she was in Ecuador. So sadly, because of this whole situation, she also had to leave Ecuador and go back to the States, but she was very happy and willing to be with us today. So I'll let you continue, Danielle. Thank you so much, Herman. Yes, and hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. Um, as Herman said, I was an English language fellow in Ecuador, just as Kim Carroll, who presented last week, uh, was a fellow in Paraguay. Um, and I'm really happy to be here on a Teacher's Day to talk to you about teaching across different age levels in, uh, in an online environment. Um, so let's just start off with a happy Teacher's Day to everybody. Um, there was this um, really amazing quote uh, that I took from the comments from last week from Karina, who said, teachers are creative, we share, and we will get through this together. So even though we're in um, a difficult situation right now, uh, teachers are amazing people, and you should be really proud of yourselves for um, how you're handling this situation and hopefully we can collaborate more um, and that this webinar gives some great ideas. So uh, just an overview uh, to get started of things we'll talk about today. Um, we'll do some introductions. I'll talk a little bit more about myself. Um, we'll talk about interactive teaching. Uh, what is it? Um, and then we'll go on to talk about how we can adapt our interactive lessons best for an online classroom environment that we're all dealing with right now. And uh, I'll share some ideas for classes and you'll also have the chance to share your ideas. And finally, uh, we'll have a little review and a wrap up. So just to start out, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, as Herman said, I was in Ecuador, but I'm from the United States. Um, I'm from the state of Rhode Island, which is the smallest state in the United States. Uh, it's really small. Um, it's located uh, in the Northeast. So right now I'm in the city of Providence, which is the capital of, the, of Rhode Island. And it's about three hours north of New York City and an hour south of Boston. So if you know those cities, that's where I am right now. Um, it's really pretty far north up here. This is Canada. So we're in spring right now. It's still a little bit chilly, um, but summer is coming. I, I bet all of you are, are sweating while I'm freezing <laughs> down south in Paraguay. And Rhode Island is known as the ocean state. It's really um, beautiful in summertime. Lots of people sail. Um, and this is a, just a picture of the, the water. Uh, there's lots of coastline. And our motto is hope, which I think is really nice uh, for this time. We're all very hopeful that things get better soon. So I studied in New York City, uh, Teachers College, Columbia University, but I have been teaching abroad 
for most of my career. So I have taught in many countries. Um, so I was in Ecuador, but before that I was in Madrid, Spain. I was a primary school English teacher at a bilingual primary school. I've taught in Korea and some other, other countries. Um, so just as a little uh, warm up, I thought uh, we could do this little fun activity. It's kind of like two truths and a lie, if you have ever played that. So I've taught in many places around the world. I've taught English. So what you're going to have to do is make a guess as to which place you think I have not taught English in, right? So the way that we're going to do this is you're going to have the option to annotate, right? So at the top of your screen, you're going to see um, this button that says view options and you're gonna click on that and you'll be able to annotate. And click on annotate and you'll see annotation tools. So you can have a stamp or a draw. Those are good options. And then you're just going to put a check a check, an X or a start next to the place that you think I have never taught English. Okay, so go ahead. I see some people are starting to annotate. Very good. Great. Let's see uh, what you all think. We're getting our votes coming in. Okay, let's wrap up your voting. Let's see. So it seems like we're pretty much like evenly distributed across all of these places. So one of them, in fact, I did not uh, teach in. I did tell you I, I taught in Ecuador, so that's where I was a fellow. So I was there. Before that, I was in Madrid. So that, I was also working there. And before that, I was in Chile. I worked in Santiago de Chile teaching English. And I've also worked in South Korea and in Hawaii. So the place that I have never taught English was in fact uh, France, although I would love to have uh, taught English there. And maybe one day, uh, maybe one day I will. So, mm -hmm. I hope so. So I'm just going to clear the clear all of the annotations and that's just a fun little warm up activity you can do you can try it with your students um, just to get to know me better. So I have taught many places around the world. So now moving on to uh, into the topic of our webinar is interactive teaching. What is interactive teaching? Um, we're going to take a look at two clips uh, from two great movies of teachers uh, teaching in the classroom, in the typical classroom. Um, so while we view them, I want you to think about uh, what you can notice about the tone of voice, the expression, the movements of the teachers, and what differences you see in the students. Okay, so just observe during uh, the viewing, what you notice about the teachers and about the students. Okay, so this is the first one. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, post links to these clips also in the comments. So if someone has trouble with the audio or it's not viewing, you can use uh, the YouTube clips uh, links to access them. So I just, I just posted that in the comments. Okay, if you're having trouble with the audio. All right, so this is from the film Ferris Bueller's Day Off. In 1930, the Republican-controlled House of Representatives, in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone? 
Great Depression passed the, anyone, anyone, a tariff bill, the Hawley-Smoot Tariff Act, which anyone raised or lowered, raised tariffs in an effort to collect more revenue for the federal government. Did it work? Anyone? Anyone know the effects? It did not work, and the United States sank deeper into the Great Depression. Today, we have a similar debate over this. Anyone know what this is, class? Anyone? Anyone? Anyone seen this before? The Laffer Curve. Anyone know what this says? It says that at this point on the revenue curve, you will get exactly the same amount of revenue as at this point. This is very controversial. Does anyone know what Vice President Bush called this in 1980? Anyone? Something D-O-O -O economics. Voodoo economics. <laughs> so that was the first clip, right? And then this is the second one. It's from the film Dead Poets Society. A man's not very tired, he is exhausted. And don't use very sad yous. Come on, Mr. Overstreet, you twerp. <laughs> morose? Exactly, morose. Now, language was developed for one endeavor, and that is, Mr. Anderson, come on, are you a man or an amoeba? <laughs> Mr. Perry. Uh, to communicate. No. To woo women. <laughs> they were going to be talking about William Shakespeare. Oh, oh, I know. A lot of you look forward to this about as much as you look forward to root canal work. We're going to talk about Shakespeare as someone who writes something very interesting. Now, many of you have seen Shakespeare done very much like this. Oh, Titus, bring your friend hither. <laughs> but if any of you have seen Mr. Marlon Brando, no, that Shakespeare can be different. France, Romans, countrymen, <laughs> let me rest. You can also imagine maybe John Wayne is Macbeth going, well, is this a dagger I see before me? <laughs> Dogs, sir? Oh, not just now. <laughs> I do enjoy a good dog once in a while, sir. You can have yourself a three-course meal from one dog. Start with your canine crudite, go to your Fido flambe for main course, and for dessert, a Pekingese parfait. And you can pick your teeth with a little paw. Why do I stand up here? Anybody? To feel taller. No. Thank you for playing, Mr. Dalton. I stand upon my desk to remind myself that we must constantly look at things in a different way. See, the world looks very different from up here. You don't believe me? Come see for yourselves. Come on. Come on. Just when you think you know something, you have to look at it in another way. Even though it may seem silly or wrong, you must try. Now, when you read, don't just consider what the author thinks. Consider what you think. Boys, you must strive to find your own voice. Because the longer you wait to begin, the less likely you are to find it at all. Thoreau said most men lead lives of quiet desperation. Don't be resigned to that. Break out. Don't just walk off the edge like lemmings. Look around you. There. There you go, Mr. Christie. Thank you. Yes. Dare to strike out and find new ground. Now, in addition to your essays, I would like you to compose a poem of your own, an original work. Oh. Oh. Oof. La -ha 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 -ha. <laughs> That's right. You have to deliver it aloud in front of the class on Monday. All right, and that was the second clip, right? Um, I saw a lot of people making great comments, um, uh, comparing the teachers uh, in the comments. That's great. But I thought uh, we can also do this in some breakout rooms. Uh, we can talk a little bit more about your reflections of the differences in the teaching styles. And also, um, after that, if you have some time, share with uh, others in your breakout room um, 
ideas you have for your successful virtual and interactive lessons, right? Or ideas you have for making a great interactive lesson. So first, uh, with the people in your breakout room, um, you're gonna compare and talk about the two clips we saw and then share with the others um, your ideas for a great interactive virtual lesson. How do we make an engaging lesson online? So Herman, do you think you could help uh, break us up into rooms maybe of five people? Perfect. Just as a reminder for the teachers to take notes about what were the things or take a picture about what are the things that they need to discuss in the rooms. Right, thank you. All right, now you're leaving for the rooms. You need to click on the option to go to the rooms. It's going to be in your screen. Maybe like two minutes. Two more minutes? Yeah. OK. I'll give check. them a warning or something. OK. Already sent. Thanks. <laughs> it gave me this thing like to join a breakout room. Did that happen to Kim too? Oh, I, I don't know. It says the host is inviting you. <laughs> Hopefully it goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Rosemary. You're checking the time because I didn't. <laughs> Um, I think one more minute. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think that's it. Okay. We're going to be back in 20 seconds. So it looks like people are starting to come back. Welcome back. Welcome back, everybody. Remember to mute your microphone when you come back. Um, it may be turned on for some of you. Great. So feel free to share in the comments um, some of what you talked about. Um, what did you think of the teachers? And if you talked about any of your lesson ideas, feel free to share in the comments. We'd love to hear more of your thoughts about interactive teaching. Um, I see in the comments already some people uh, spoke about the first teacher being incredibly boring. It's teacher-centered. Absolutely. Um, he doesn't engage with the students. And then uh, in the second with Robin Williams, just such a classic uh, scene and a, a great actor. Many people said they love the movie. Uh, it's very inspirational. He is uh, a model teacher. Uh, he has great rapport with his students. He's engaging, they're laughing. Um, so absolutely, they're, they're basically polar opposites. As, as many of you noted. Um, and I love this, this comment from Simon, effort and energy that you put into teaching means a lot. Um, and that's what we're all trying to do. That's why we're here today, definitely. And some of these comments about activities from Blanca, Padlet, Canvas, Menti, great ideas, all uh, tools that you can use. Um, we talked about the teacher's attitude. We need to be positive as students can feel that. Definitely, um, our students, uh, especially young children are very perceptive. Any emotion you're showing, they pick up on. So the more positive we can be, uh, we have to set examples as teachers and it can be very challenging, but uh, we're here to support each other in doing that now. So, great. So moving on. Um, as we're talking about uh, transitioning to online teaching, um, it, as we saw in the clips uh, from the videos, these are examples of physical classrooms that we're all, uh, most of us are used to, but how do we transition that energy, that passion, that interactive nature of our activities to the online environment? Uh, that can be really challenging. Um, how to adapt our lessons effectively um, and what tools and people can help us in that process. So it seems like many of you have been working on that, mentioning some great things in the comments, Kahoot, 
definitely. We're going to talk about all of that. Very good. One step ahead of me. So some, I wanted to share with you some interactive teaching activities that uh, I have done successfully before in my classroom. Um, and we can talk together how those activities can be transitioned well into the online environment. Um, so three activities that uh, I consistently would do with my students were working with stories and poems, uh, doing show and tell, and different kinds of group games. Those were just three uh, very successful, naturally interactive activities that I love to do um, with my classes. Uh, but how do we transition stories and poems effectively to an online class, right? So it's a good content, right? Because it's, the language is already authentic and meaningful. It's personal and engaging for students. So already the content is good. Um, the students enjoy it. Um, and it's also great because it's adaptable, right? So you can do a read aloud with lower levels, readers theater with uh, students who are slightly more advanced, and you can have your most advanced students writing their own sorts of activities. But let's see. How can we do a read aloud effectively online? We have to think about the best way to present our material uh, because uh, an online virtual read aloud is not exactly the same thing as reading aloud a story in your classroom. So uh, when I taught second grade primary students uh, in Madrid, we often use these big books in the classroom, physically a very large book. And we use them because it grabbed the students' attention, uh, it helped them engage with the story. So it was a very effective technique uh, for reading aloud a story. And we used the physical book. Students really enjoyed that. So much like in this picture here of the very hungry caterpillar, we used very large props and physical props. But now we're in a virtual classroom, right? So, we still have great options for engaging stories, but how do we physically present it, right? How do we present that material? So maybe we have to think about using a smaller book. The big book is no longer effective because it will take up the whole screen and we won't see the pictures, right? A smaller book will fit on the screen. Uh, the students can see it. Um, and maybe instead of using a big book to engage students, we have to find another way, um, maybe dressing up in a costume or using puppets. Uh, with my students online, sometimes I wear these crazy outfits, like these bunny ears. Just for the little kids, it helps engage when you're on a computer, right? So we have to reassess how we're engaging our, our students. And then maybe we don't need a physical book in a read aloud when we're doing it virtually. Maybe using a book in a PowerPoint format or even an animated version is, is perfectly fine um, and very effective for our situation. So we're starting to have to find ways to adapt our materials uh, so that they're still effective and engaging online. And also, um, so for older students, um, you know, stories and poetry is also very good. It's very engaging. But now we have, um, we often try to discourage social media use, but now that we're in this virtual environment, it really makes sense to encourage it. Um, and also being in this sort of quarantine situation, it's a nice time to encourage our students to be self-reflective, um, and to sort of make connections emotionally, because it can help uh, deal with the stress of, uh, of our online classes and like being at home. So it's nice, like this is an I, the I am poem. It's really a simple poem that practices with parts of speech. Um, that's really great for teenagers or adult students. And then, um, 
this, uh, this particular student, um, the assignment was to create the poem and then illustrate it with images from their social media account. So this is really nice because, you know, we're already on the computer, so we might as well make use of our, our online tools, right? And also another really effective thing uh, with teenagers and adults is using Instagram. Insta poetry is really popular right now. Uh, teenagers love it. Um, so you could have an assignment with students where they have to create an Insta, Insta poem, right? And you can create an Instagram account for them to share it. And just like having other students like it, using the social media to our advantage during this time, I, I think is a, is a great way to make engaging and interactive uh, lessons. And one other uh, way to use poetry uh, during our quarantine and uh, virtual learning uh, could be with an animated poetry assignment. This is something that I did with the, um, the Access students, the English Micro Scholarship Program for Access students. We did this when I was in Ecuador with them. And they had, uh, the topic was Women's History Month or Women in History. And they had to choose a woman that was meaningful to them and they had to write a poem and animate it. And it's a really fun assignment that um, is good for people uh, to start to use technology a little bit. It, there's lots of um, ways to animate these poems online. So I'll just let you see a little, a little bit of this student's animated poem. Keep me in your heart till I come to you. Keep me on your mind till you breathe in my kiss. Hold me like a promise. Hide me as a treasure. I'll be home soon. I'll be home soon. I've been looking for you where you've been so long. So that student, she, yeah, she used this website, kazoa.com, to make it. Um, and I think it's a really nice way to uh, use technology and uh, poetry in your classroom. So uh, another great interactive activity that works well across ages is a show and tell assignment. Right, so I love show and tell because it's very simple and it's just a naturally interactive activity. You can adapt it for complexity very easily and it builds community in your classroom, which is what we're trying to do right now. We're all in different places. So these sorts of activities where you're sharing really helps to build, uh, build a sense of class community. And it's a good way to practice speaking and it helps to encourage sort of a routine which, uh, which kids need right now. We really need to focus on giving them the routine for some stability. So this is what I would usually give the students as a handout uh, that they would have to fill in. Uh, so it's just, you know, it's, it was for young primary students. So it was very simple. And this is the information that they would have to present to the class in a, in a oral presentation. And then these are the rules that we had in the class during their presentations. You know, looking at the speaker, listening, raising your hand. And then after the presentations, the other students had the opportunity to ask different questions. So it's very interactive in, in that way. So these were some of the questions that they, they could ask or their own question if they, if they had a more advanced level, right? So this is what the traditional show and tell sort of looked like in the class. 
right? So there's the students here and then the others, the presenting student would sit in the front with their toy or their show and tell object, right? So what do you think? How can we adapt this traditional show and tell in the virtual classroom? What, what do you think needs to be changed? Can it be exactly the same? Is there some tool or technique that could make it more effective when we're all in different places? Uh, feel free to write in the comments if you have ideas about how to adapt this activity for the online environment. Right, so Karina says, I like how you structure the activity in the nice steps. Thank you, Karina. Yeah, it's, it's nice to give uh, the students this routine and structure it well because it helps to keep it organized right so we we need to be consistent with the structure even online so we don't lose control of the class right so uh one one friend of mine who did this with their class recently um, the challenge for them was that students were having a hard time seeing the item really well because normally in the physical classroom, the student can go around and show each child individually up close the, the show and tell item, but you can't do that um, through a screen. So what uh, this teacher did is they had an additional PowerPoint slide of an up close picture of the item and they also showed that to the class uh, during the show and tell presentation to just enhance the presentation and make sure that everyone can see well right so that was just one one way that they enhanced and adapted show and tell for the online uh, online environment right so, um, so, so Blanca says using Realia, puppets, right, definitely, if you can, as a teacher, if you can help make these activities come alive with more Realia and, and puppets, it helps a lot, for sure. So show and tell, um, it works for all ages. So this is, this is what it would look like with smaller children. Maybe they're showing a toy or, or something important to them. Also with the online environment, you can show less traditional things. So um, one student um, in my friend's class actually showed his baby sister to, to the class because you know it was easy for him to do that because he was at his house. So you can show less traditional things uh, in our virtual show and tells. So that's really nice and an, and an advantage to being at home right now. But there's other variations of show and tell that you can do. So this is um, maybe great for older students, a genealogy show and tell. Being at home, we're going through a lot of pictures. Maybe we're talking more with family. My mother recently sent me this picture of me when I was a little girl, because she's going through tons of family photos. So older students might want to tell a story about their family um, as a show and tell, or, or show a photo that they discovered. And another fun way to make it uh, show and tell a little different is you can have students guess what the object is. So you don't show it to them. You give them clues. It's, they sometimes call it secret in a bag. So the other students have to guess what it is. So that's one other variation of the activity. So another great interactive activity that works well for virtual environment are, are different kinds of group games. And there are so many of them. Um, games are, are really important for our English class because they're fun. You can introduce movement really easily and variety into your lessons with games. They're good for reviewing concepts, building team, teamwork, uh, and building rapport between you and your students. So 
there's nothing more powerful for a child than, than a teacher that plays with them, right? It's very, very valuable. And your students will respect you and love you if you, if you take some time to play. So definitely uh, making time in your class for some games is a great idea. So one that I love is Jeopardy. Jeopardy is very simple and there's a great website, jeopardylabs.com, where you can find tons of pre-made Jeopardy boards, right? So you can take one that's already made or you can make your own. So if you're not familiar with Jeopardy, it's just like a, a quiz show basically. And um, what you do is you're in different teams and you uh, choose a category, for example, foods and you choose points, so foods for 300. And then you get a question. So the question is something sweet that bees Mahi. make. Mahi. So you can write, if you know the answer, you can write in the comments. What is something sweet that bees make? <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing lots of people responding great. Honey, right? Honey, definitely. So, <laughs> So you can. <laughs> Thank you for your answer. Definitely, honey. And then you can award points to that team, 300 points, right? So Jeopardy is one option for a great fun game. You can review concepts, practice vocabulary. Uh, and students of all ages love it from from age six to adults. It's a great option. And there's so many uh, games and platforms that we can use in our classes. I mean, this is just a small sample. Many of you mentioned already um, using Kahoot's. There is um, another great one that's popular with a lot of teachers right now is Bamboozle. That's another great one. Um, Go Noodle is a great site if you need to introduce some movement into your class. For, for older students, you can have them make a meme. There's just the, the world is your oyster. There's so many options. And I also wanted to share this with all of you um, because I think it's something that's really important. Um, if you're familiar with the site Teachers Pay Teachers, um, they just sent this uh, to, to many people. It's a daily brain breaks and activities calendar. So to help us all with our lesson planning during um, this remote teaching, they release this calendar that gives options for uh, an activity for your, for your students to give them sort of like a mental break and keep them engaged in class. So I th thought this was really nice. Um, every day they, they give a new idea and most of them are very simple and they work well with, um, with English classes. So I, I think it's fantastic because we need to give ourselves a break and we need to give our students a break, right? So doing some of these activities are a great way uh, to, to do that. So I thought we could try one, this share a song, right? So this is actually um, was an activity a, a teacher in Germany did with her English students. It's a song. Um, she did it in the form of uh, having the students illustrate the song, but we can do it in sort of like a karaoke. You can sing along. Don't worry, your microphone is off, so you can sing as loud as you want. Um, no one is going to hear you or laugh at you. So um, just take a look and feel free to sing. Feel free to stand up and, and dance if you want. Um, this is just a, a little example of a brain break or a fun activity to do with students. If what I am is what's in me, then I'll stay strong, that's who I'll be. And I will always be the best me that I can be. There's only 
on me, I admit. Have a dream, I'll follow it. It's up to me to try. I'ma keep my head up high, keep on reaching high, never gonna quit, I'll keep it stronger, and nothing's gonna bring me down, never gonna stop, gotta go, because I know I'll keep it stronger, and what I am is full, and what I am is musical, and what I am is smart, and what I am is and what I am is there's nothing I can achieve because in myself I believe in though Gonna keep all heads up high, keep on reaching high Never gonna quit, just keep getting stronger And nothing's gonna bring us down Never giving up, gotta go Because I know I'll keep getting stronger What I am is There's nothing I can achieve because in myself I've been leaving good. Gonna hold my head up high, keep on reaching high. I'm never gonna stop, I'll keep getting stronger. Nothing's gonna bring me down, never give it up, gotta go. Yeah, I'll keep getting stronger. Yeah, so that song was uh, by the artist Will I Am, um, and I will definitely share share this whole presentation with you and and the links to those songs. Uh, I got this from YouTube, but you can get them um, other places as well. And yeah, it's a really fun activity, as I see some of you have mentioned. Um, it gets students, um, it helps them with their comprehension of of uh, oral and written English. And it also gives them an opportunity to sing or dance um, if you play it with your classes. So it's, it's a nice activity. And of course, if you have older students or adults, you can, you can choose other songs that are appropriate for them, right? There's lots of content out there that we can use. So we're starting to wrap up. So um, just reviewing some of what we talked about. Um, today we talked about interactive teaching um, and how it keeps our students engaged, right? So we need to do our best to make our lessons, you know, like Robin Williams did in Dead Poets Society, um, encouraging them to uh, produce things that are their own, right? Whether that be speaking or, or writing a poem or singing a song, right? We don't want to just talk to them because they're not going to learn as well that way, right? So um, trying our best to find those activities that really engage our students, right? And um, we also, you know, we, I showed you some of my lessons that I used to use in my physical classroom we can adapt those lessons for a virtual environment and have them still be effective. We just have to be a little creative uh, and think about how do we do it correctly and what tools can we use to make uh, and enhance those lessons, right? Maybe it's a animating a storybook or um, maybe it's showing uh, images on a PowerPoint of a student's show and tell. So we just need to think a little bit more sometimes before we, we, we sh share our lesson online. And we spoke about sort of just taking care of yourself. We need to give ourselves these brain breaks, a, a, a moment to relax, right? So if you're um, teaching online, send your students uh, to the breakout rooms every once in a while, if they're old enough to do that responsibly because it gives you as a teacher a moment to sit back and say, okay, now I can move forward. Now I can think about how the lesson is going. 
So give yourself that space. And it's also great for students to, to talk together in small groups and breakout rooms are one way to do that, right? And most importantly, have fun. Sing, dance, enjoy your lessons, do your best to enjoy the time with your students, even though it's not so traditional, right? So have fun the best that you can. So as we move forward, um, I really love this quotation. This is from Simone from uh, last week during Kim's presentation. Uh, it says, we're in this together. We have the power to adapt to new changes. And that's so true. Um, we're, we're all teachers. We all have ideas, resources. And what I hope is that we can collaborate and share those resources together. Um, so, you know, I love this sharing is caring. So what I've done is I've made a shared folder uh, through Google Drive. I've uploaded many of my own uh, lesson materials or things that I have found from other teachers that I communicate with. And also in that folder, I have uploaded this PowerPoint uh, presentation. So I'd love to share that with all of you. So I'm gonna post the link to that shared folder and it's open for you to edit. So we have uh, hundreds of people listening to this webinar right now. So I hope you will all contribute uh, something to the folder, a resource, something that has worked well for you so that uh, we can collaborate more. Um, so I see someone has their hand raised. I don't know if Herman, you can see who has their hand raised. Mm -hmm. If you have um, comments, feel free to write them now. Um, if there's any questions you have, I'm gonna post the link to the Google Drive. Um, <laughs> and it is a very special day. So I wanna just thank all of you teachers um, for everything that you're doing to keep your students learning. And I hope you enjoy this day and treat yourself well today. Uh, let's see. And also before you leave, I just shared the link to the survey please make sure to complete that with your names in the bottom in order to be able to have you in the list for the digital certificates. So please make sure that you copy that link into your browsers and then complete the super short survey. Thank you very much. It's gonna be very useful for that, for us. Do we have any questions? Makers link for your part. Like, yeah, for like, Jeopardy. Yeah. yeah, it's Jeopardy Labs. Yep, uh, JeopardyLabs.com. So you can put that into Google and you'll see it. Mm -hmm. You're also, very welcome to all of you. Thank you. <laughs> and also, before you leave, uh, if you want to be in the picture as well, if you can put on your camera so Danielle can uh, have a picture with you all. <laughs> <laughs> That would be great. Yeah, whoever wants to join for the group picture, just put on your cameras for one second. <laughs> uh, let me check how can I do this. Awesome. Danielle, I think you need to stop sharing your screen so I okay. can have a like a full view of everyone's. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> now I see you all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll take the first round. So smile in three, two, one. Smile. Stay there. One second. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next page. 
<laughs> and again, three, two, one, smile. The next page. <laughs> there, there's just so many of you. Three, two, one. Perfect. And that's it. All right. Thank you very much. Again, make sure to complete the survey. Danielle has shared the link to all the different materials. I also got a question. You're going to be able to have last week's um, a video and also uh, today's webinar in a link I'm going to be sharing in, in the emails, I hope. Uh, I, 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 we have some uh, issues with the emails today. Some people didn't get it. Uh, probably it's in their junk folder. So I'm going to try to do a better job next time to make sure that everyone gets in, get, gets the link on time. So if you don't have any other questions, we're going to set you free so you can continue. With Thank you. you so much, Herman, for organizing everything. Thank you, Danielle. That was awesome. I enjoy the song. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for that <laughs> song and play it again. <laughs> Great. It's a good one. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. Happy Teacher's Day. Happy Teacher's Day. Bye-bye. Yes, stay home. <laughs>